Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Wednesday night of Bible study. You guessed it, we're week 27. So that means we're on, uh, sorry, day 27. So we're on, which is, I guess, the week for us, uh, Proverbs chapter 27. And the title of this little Bible study is Present in the Moment. So one of the greatest gifts that we can give the people around us and the people that's in our little sphere of influence our families, our loved ones, our church, is the gift of our presence. We live in a distracted world. There are always texts coming in. There's emails. There's phone calls. we got push notifications, uh, Facebook posts to keep up with, Instagram feeds, Twitter feeds. It's like, oh my goodness, there's so much out there. And then you have your kids or your family, your spouse, your mom, your dad, somebody pulling for your attention in the actual space that you're in while you have all these other things coming at you. So it can be very taxing sometimes and very distracting, and we end up not being present with the people that we care about. And I don't know if you've noticed, but here recently, we've had a lot of people around that have been very sick or that have ended up dying and I guarantee you some of the regret of the people that they left behind or that came to the brink is that I have not been as present as I should have been in their life. <clears throat> or I, haven't, I didn't call them enough. I didn't just tell them I love them, that I appreciate them, that I'm glad they're just alive. And those moments that pass, you don't get them back. Those moments that slip through your fingers you will never be able to get them again. So that's what I think is more important in life right now, more than ever before, is that we need to focus on being present with the people we interact with every single day. Now Solomon sums up this concept in Proverbs 27, 17, and he says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Another way, another way we could say this is that when we are present in our friends' lives, everyone benefits. So it's not a one-sided deal. It's everybody's present. You're enjoying the company of each other. And wisdom invites us into a life of being present in any and every circumstance, intentionally. You can't be present by accident. Like, I used to get all the time YouTube notifications like crazy. I was subscribed to somebody's channel. And so if you have all these different channels you're subscribed to or uh, Instagram feeds, by the way, go check out the church's Instagram, uh, and you have all these things that are notifying you and you're trying to keep up with everything, your time is so filled up with that that the people around you, you're not even paying attention to. Or uh, I have to get on a Tristan because it will be a, a conversation. And he's like, I don't know. He's not really giving me an answer because he's lost in his phone. Say, Tristan, take your eyes off the phone, look up at me, and guess what? It's not just kids that have that problem. I, I have seen people driving. I try not to touch my phone too much while I'm driving. Sometimes there's no choice, but nine times out of ten, I try to keep it where it needs to be instead of in my hand and me looking at it, unless I'm sitting like at a stoplight. But there are people driving down the road just like this with the phone in their hand while they are in motion driving down a busy, like the loop out here. You're going to kill somebody or yourself. They're not even being present when something very serious demands their attention. You may be guilty of that. I may be talking to you. That's fine. You need to hear this. <coughs> Wisdom invites us to be a part of each other's lives with intention. Intentionality, not proximity. So just because I'm next to somebody, just because I'm sitting next to my child does not mean I'm giving him the time he requires or deserves. I have been guilty of it being a lot easier for me to put an iPad in my son's hand when he's acting out instead of me going and doing something with him to run that energy out of him. I don't know, if maybe y'all are a bunch of perfect parents. I've been guilty of doing that. Or saying, Tristan, you're driving me nuts, go to your room. When really, he's just kind of starving for some attention. And kids don't always know how to say their feelings. Hey, adults don't either. So, not in just proximity, but this allows us, this allows iron to sharpen iron. My son can't grow in maturity and wisdom 
and the knowledge of God and learn how to listen to God and being led by the Spirit if he doesn't have people teaching him. So that's that iron sharpening iron. Now, <clears throat> in the process of sharpening a knife, there's a great amount of care and intention that goes into the sharpening of it, into making sure that the right parts of the metals intersect for the sharpening to occur. This is how being present works in our interactions with other people, with our family and loved ones and our church family. The challenging part is about being present in other people's lives is that if real sharpening is going on and taking place, friction is going to be created. Friction can be difficult. But friction should not be shunned. Uh, butting heads with people, conflict, don't run from conflict. This type of resistance training actually will, after we get through it, that's the thing, you gotta, you gotta not stop seeing short-sighted and look at what can happen beyond. You cannot, it's a literal tearing away of that metal to make that knife sharper. You cannot become sharper if you don't have something pushing against you. But it causes friction. But if you really want to walk in the way of wisdom, then you're going to have to embrace the friction that comes with it and allow your presence to guide transformation through the situation. The dangerous thing about sharpening is that if you're not able to lean into the friction and allow it to become transformation, then you will make the situation worse than it ever could be. <clears throat> so... I'm going to leave you with this challenge like I try to do every Wednesday. What in your life right now is really pushing against you, is really causing a lot of friction? And we've been, we've been talking about being led by the Spirit, and then on Wednesdays we've been talking about wisdom. There's a reason God's leading this way, because He needs the church people to stop fighting each other, stop being at odds with each other, and understand that that friction is not a conflict but it is a conduit to where God can really pass through us and work through us and move through us and and show the people that do not know God who God is by the love and the compassion and the mercy that we show each other I give an abundance of mercy and grace to people because I require so much more how and where do you need to be present in your life and what transformation do you think that will bring? Maybe God has led you to a place that is so uncomfortable that you can't stand it. And sparks may be flying. But if you allow yourself to be led by the Spirit and not the flesh, then you will understand the Scriptures in a very simplistic way that whatever happens, God is working it for your good for His glory, and for His name's sake. And if your life belongs to God, then your sole purpose is to bring honor to His name. That's tough. Because that means that now we don't, we're not trying to seek after that control. We give that over to Him and allow Him to, to work in a way that only He can. But I promise you, every single time, every single time, point of friction is only making you sharper be present even if you're not in a circumstance you may be in a marriage that you don't want to be present anymore that you've been present for long enough and they didn't try so why should you don't allow the enemy to make a wedge allow God to sharpen that knife it'll sharpen your spirit it'll sharpen your mind, your body, your soul. There, there's things that follow suit when we start being led by the Spirit. It's not just a spiritual thing. It bleeds out into everything else and it creates the fruits of the Spirit that we talked about last Sunday to where you start producing these things. You get your roots in the right soil. You're, you're planting the right seeds and all of a sudden you've got a garden that, that you can eat and enjoy from. But you have to have that, that brokenness of the ground. You have to have those seeds being planted and you have to allow that friction to happen because it we're all in training none of us are perfect some of us may act like we are 
some of us may even point blame to other people when actually we're the problem. Or you may say that you can't stand this about about, some, about somebody else, but it's actually what you're doing yourself because it's so hard to see ourselves. So we have to have other people um, influence in our lives, have an inner circle to where you you allow yourself to be vulnerable to them, that you allow that sharpening to happen. So be in prayer of who to allow in that inner circle because it can make or break your life. So Sister Jessie and I have been talking. Uh, she came up with the idea. So we have right now a lot of people that are either in the middle of COVID or in the hospital. Uh, we have some extensions of uh, Pastor Aaron, some extensions of his family, his sisters, in-laws that are in dire need right now in Louisiana. I think that's where they're at. Um, and then we have somebody that's on the board at our church. So tonight's Wednesday, the 23rd, all day Thursday. Pick a time, pick a meal, do it all day if you can. But we believe that God is the God who still heals. And one of the two things that Jesus said that would change everything is prayer and fasting. And so tomorrow on Thursday, all day, I want you to pick a time. I want you to pick a meal. If you can't, if you have to have food for medicine or something, whatever your situation may be, there's all kinds of different fasts. But I want us to fast and pray for our church body and for this entire pandemic situation that is taking people's lives left and right. We have the authority in Jesus Christ to rebuke and heal sickness. So on the 23rd, Thursday, tomorrow, all day long, prayer and fasting. And I believe that through this prayer and fasting, God is going to change Longview, Texas because God answers the cries of his people. He shows up in the midst of his people praying. Because prayer doesn't change some things, it changes everything. So make sure that you pick a day, pick a thing, fast social media, whatever. We all can use that. Uh, pick something. Pray all day. We're going to believe, and I want you to believe and bind these spirits of sickness. Believe that God is going to do something miraculous. And that our church, beyond what it already is, is going to be a house of healing that God is going to show up for his name's sake. Make sure that you are uh, having our in-person service this coming Sunday on the 26th. So you can come in person or you can join us live, whatever you want to do, however you feel comfortable. Uh, we're excited to see y'all. We're excited to finally be back in person and be in serious prayer for every service. I do not take Sunday mornings lightly. I don't take Wednesdays lightly. This is a time where things really change. So invite somebody, be in prayer, come early if you want to pray, and we're going to see Longview, Texas, and the state of Texas change because of this body of believers right here. So make sure you come Sunday, and we'll see you then.